The RPG genre is the biggest game type in the world and the mobile phone is the biggest gaming platform. 2023 has some really exciting games coming out, some of which few people know about. So in this video, I am going to tell you the top 10 mobile RPGs of 2023. The first and best RPG for 2023 is Wuthering Waves. This game is being called a Genshin Impact Killer. Personally, I don't believe that Genshin will be dethroned by a game too similar to itself, but nonetheless, there is quite a bit of hype for this game. The thing that sets this game apart from the rest is its system for movement and combat. You can see in this gameplay trailer that the game includes several unique elements to movement like scaling walls, teleporting, and gliding. These techniques can be used during combat, creating incredibly dynamic fights in a way that will be extremely satisfying for the player that becomes skilled at this game. In addition to these mechanics, the story of the game is incredibly intriguing, in which a worldwide disaster called the Calament brought forth an unknown enemy, but also brought forth the withering substance that when combined with certain humans called quarters, makes them extremely powerful. You are one of these powerful humans as you undertake the task of figuring out what happened happen to your world, which I will add happens to be a very open world so you can explore it as you desire. The second game on the list is Honor of King's World. Tencent is turning the highest grossing game in the world into an RPG and the graphics are unbelievable. Literally, I don't actually believe that they can make water splash on the camera like this without bogging down the phone. Perhaps they have a way to fake it so it doesn't have to be computer generated. Nevertheless, this is a huge deal. Now, some of you might have never heard of Honor of Kings, and that is because it is only available in China and a few other countries in that region, which makes it even more impressive that it is the highest grossing mobile game in the world, superseding both PUBG Mobile and Genshin Impact. The game is really just a MOBA, but it is unbelievably popular in China, and that has allowed them to create a deep lore and a massive world based around their game. So Timmy Studios is taking all of that story and world building and putting it into one of the most beautiful RPGs I have ever seen. So much so that I am still having trouble believing these graphics are real. The bonus game for this video is Ninja Must Die, which is a fantastic new ninja game released last month. If you have quick reflexes, you will love this game. Centered around the perspective of a ninja named Kiro, Ninja Must Die tells a fascinating story of a hero's journey amidst extreme betrayal. This betrayal is mainly from the samurai which were out allies during the war 300 years ago against the evil Oni King. But as the story unfolds, Kuro is also betrayed by some of his fellow ninjas. This game requires quick reflexes and some strategy as to what specials you want to choose and when to use them to make it through the hundreds of levels unfolding the storyline. The game also has several other game modes like a race against 49 other players, a 3 player co-op mode, and a 3v3 battle. All of these use the same ink and wash paint graphics you are seeing in this video. So if this game interests you, I have put information in the description and pinned comment of this video. The third game on the list is Ashfall. Now some of you might be surprised to see this game below Wuthering Waves since I put it above it in my top 10 games overall. The reason for this is because I think Wuthering Waves will get more hype from RPG enthusiasts, whereas Ashfall will generate more hype overall. Ashfall is NetEase's new post-apocalyptic shooter and in typical NetEase fashion, instead of just making a Fallout mobile, thus incurring the wrath of Fallout fans, they are essentially making their own semi-unique mobile version of the game. I think they might have even bought some of the rights from Fallout because they are using the same music producer Ainan Zur, but more impressively, they also hired Hans Zimmer, who is one of the most famous music directors in the entire music industry. This is a big reason why I'm putting this game so high on this list. From what we can see, the graphics and gameplay are going to be awesome, but that is true of a lot of games coming out this year. What sets this game apart from other games is first that they are literally sparing no expense on music, hiring one of the best music composers in the world, which of course screams that this will be a AAA game. Second, post-apocalyptic worlds are in vogue right now, and there aren't a lot of good post-apocalyptic games for the phone, meaning that this game will have its own niche in the gaming market. Fallout is a huge franchise largely because it was the best of the post-apocalyptic 
post-apocalyptic genre, so if Nettie spares no expense at doing this with Ashfall, I have no doubt it will do amazing this year. The fourth game is Zenla Zone Zero, which is Mihoyo's newest game. Some might expect me to put this higher on this list because Genshin Impact is the biggest RPG the world has yet experienced. But sequels do not always measure up, and so far we don't know a ton about this game. Other than the art style, there really hasn't been a ton released about the game yet. There are a few fight scenes, so it gives us a little taste of the gameplay, but they are so short that it still leaves a lot of questions on how the game will play out, and there's definitely no information about the world and how open it will be. Now don't get me wrong, this game will get a ton of downloads and be a huge success regardless, because Mahoyo now has a huge fan base, and that is how the world works. But I will not rank this game higher until it earns it by its own merit, and so far, that is yet to be seen. Perhaps I will be singing a different tune later on this year. The fifth game is Roko Kingdom, which is an open world monster taming MMORPG being made by Tencent. Even though it is an MMO, I thought it would be better to put it on this list for two reasons. First, the game has a Genshin Impact feel to it, which is still a preference in our current gaming climate, as most mobile gamers are not yet tired and seeking something new. Second, both Monster Hunter games and the concept of Pokemon are favorites among RPG enthusiasts because of their long histories with dozens of well-known RPGs in those styles. So with these two factors in mind, I thought it was a better fit here. From looking at the footage we have so far, it is clear Tencent is putting a good amount of effort into this game, and they have the advantage of pulling content from the previous four Roko Kingdom games, plus a TV show. Not to mention those fan bases will be particularly invested in this project. The sixth game on the list is Crystal of Atlant. Honestly, I wasn't able to find anything super unique about this game to highlight for you guys, but it is an upcoming high quality game with good graphics and gameplay. The fighting style and animations look fun, the world seems like it will be really fun to explore, and the skills look satisfying to unlock. So it has a lot of great things going for it, which is why it is on this list, but nothing really stands out as the best of that category. Even the story, which is a cool concept, including a world where magic and machinery are symbiotic, i.e. guns use magic as their bullets, is not one that stands out. Perhaps I have played too many games that I'm re-experiencing the words of Solomon when he says there is nothing new under the sun. Except in this case, a crystal replaces the sun as the world's main source of energy, and apparently also provides room for conspiracies and political unrest. So bottom line, if you are looking for an all-around good RPG, this is going to be a great choice. The seventh game on the list is Infinity Nikki. Look at the graphics of this game. They are unbelievable. I think the whole point of this game is just to saturate your senses with beauty. I love that kind of stuff, but unfortunately for me, this game seems to be more of a puzzle game than the typical RPG I usually get into. But I have a lot of friends that prefer this type of game. Peacefully solving puzzles in a beautiful environment is relaxing, and maybe I should like it more. If I can't kill something and use the loot to craft a weapon that is perpetually on fire, then I struggle to stay engaged. All that to say, if you are less of a barbarian than I am, this will be a great choice for you. The eighth game is Project Reborn. This game uses the same 3D art style graphics that we are seeing in other 2023 games like Dawnlands and Seven Deadly Sins Origins, but this one also includes much more detailed and impressive combat choreography. This is a big deal for a fighting game because it gives a visualization to the sense of progression that we often long for in RPGs. If we spend all of that time playing to get more power it is nice that the game actually shows it in something other than just bigger hit point damage markers. This game also has very impressive parkour elements added to the game, which is often harder for developers because it removes one of the easiest ways to prevent game exploit. So these two things alone set this game apart from your average game, but this game also has an extreme commitment to an open world. So this game would probably be even higher on this list, but it is still going by its project name, so I'm thinking there's a good chance it might not be able to be released this year. The ninth game on the list is Oath of Peak. This game has a lot of things to like and a lot of things that are often disliked. For example, there are a ton of pets in the game that you can take care of and even breed into new ones, which is great. But then those offspring inherit the skills of their parents, allowing you to grow more and more powerful pets, resulting in a total of 256 permutations. This of course could be cool, but often when games do this, it makes the game either extremely great or significantly pay to win. So that is just one example of many. This game has a lot of stuff to do
do with lots of events. So if you want to get lost in a game, this game will be happy to help. The last game on the list is Eversoul. This game is already out. It was released on January 5th and it has significant hype because it is a classic RPG with new twists and stunning graphics. However, the reason it is not high on this list is because it seems a little bit of a waifu collection game. And while some serious gamers are into that, I would argue that most are not because usually games that use those techniques sacrifice other aspects of their game. In fact, even if they don't mean to, the very concept usually takes away from the typical freedoms provided by most RPGs. Okay, so those are the top 10 mobile RPGs of 2023, but I do have three more honorable mentions for you. The first honorable mention is Anima. This action RPG was released late in 2021 and still had enough hype that it should have been on our top 10 RPG list for 2022. But unfortunately, it never made it there. Because of this, I wanted to mention it here for those of you that use these lists to know all the great games available in that genre. It is a fantastic game that isn't as good as the main games I mentioned in that video, but it is still very good and worth checking out. The second honorable mention is Undecember. This game was second on my list last year and ended up performing even better than my first choice because the game's biggest competitor was Diablo Immortal, which made it shine in the things that serious gamers care about, like good graphics, depth of skill customization, and lack of pay to win element, which ironically, it wasn't that lacking in, but compared to Diablo Immortal, it looked good. Since this game was released late last year, it qualified for this list, but the strong bias we place on year of games pushed it down to an honorable mention. The third honorable mention is Seven Deadly Sins Origins. This game also has a lot of great things going for it. As mentioned earlier, this game has the newer 3D art style graphics, which makes the game both beautiful and relaxing. The main reason this game is not on this list is because I don't think it will be released this year, but we are very early into the year, so it's still possible. Well, that's it guys, hope that helped. If you were thinking, dang it, a lot of these games aren't out yet, this is because we still have all 12 months left for this year. If you are wanting to watch a video with games that are already out, make sure to watch this playlist with the top games of 2022. I will also be updating my list throughout this year, so if that interests you, make sure to subscribe so that you get those notifications. All right guys, I'll see you next time.